Hi, I'm Commissioner Henry Mitchell III, District 1 Commissioner, and I'd like to welcome you to the 2016 Completed Splashed Projects Update. Today, you'll have a chance to sit down with me and a couple of my colleagues, or my directors, and they'll talk to you about the various splash programs, how well that these projects have kind of went through the splash program, and kind of we'll talk more about what it is that this splash penny did to the citizens of Douglas County. So welcome, come on board, and uh, let me first start off by allowing these two gentlemen to introduce themselves. Hello, my name is Gary Dukes, and I'm the Director of Parks and Recreation for Douglas County. Hi, my name is Terry Gable. I'm with Atlas Consultants, and I've been, uh, I'm the program manager for the SPLOS program, and I've been on board since the beginning of it in 2017. So before we kind of move into the project itself, talk about your role, your true role. I mean, that was a great introduction, but talk about your role and how this SPLOS dollar or penny moved through Douglas County. Uh, you know, it's been, a, uh, it's, been a, it's been a great experience from the very beginning. Uh, my role with, has been to touch all the SPLOS projects, not just parks, but Obviously, there was other programs involved with it, but um, I've been uh, involved with the design teams and the construction teams from the very beginning, uh, along with uh, being a li liaison to the commissioners and the board. Uh, so it's been a great experience, and I've, we've had great luck with it. Okay, so this focus on the projects that we're going to focus on are the Parks and Recs projects. So with that being said, let's start with Mr. Dukes. Talk about just in general, well, let me do this first. The SPLOS penny that we dealt with for Parks and Rec was 17% of the $100 million. So that's roughly? 17 million. Okay, yeah. okay. And, and we had a good run on that SPLOS program. We did. <laughs> and, it, and, and let me say to the citizens of Douglas County, we did exceptionally well. I, I'm proud of them going to the mall, <laughs> going out to eat. Yes. And, and that penny really, truly went a long way. So talk about those $17 million, those $17 plus million dollars <laughs> that we dealt yeah. with. Let's start with one project in mind that you want to kind of knock off the list. Well, about we, up to this day, we have about 12 projects that we've completed. We still have a few projects in the works, but uh, several of those projects uh, that have been completed are, of course, our magnificent activity center. We're yeah. sitting in here today. Uh, crown prince of the Parks and Recreation Department at this time. Hopefully there'll be more added later, but, but this, this, is it, the, this is it. This was one of the largest buildings built in Parks and Rec's history in Douglas County, correct? Absolutely. Talk Absolutely. about, give us a little bit of the details about this particular building. This facility is a 25 to 30,000 square foot facility. It has two full uh, time gymnasiums in it. Uh, it has this magnificent workout room uh, upstairs, a track, upstairs track where you can walk or jog uh, during the cold, inclement months out of the year. We also have an activity room that is a multi-purpose room where we can do all sorts of classes. Plus, it's a good community room. As you saw today as we entered, it's a polling precinct. So we have the voters in, inside in a beautiful facility and they can come and vote. And it's used for community meetings, outings, uh, all sorts of different activities. And, and so we forgot basketball. We have, we have <laughs> basketball. Yes. We have eight goals, uh, we have eight goals uh, on each side. On each, so we have a total of 16 goals. Uh, pick up ball, leagues, uh, we can also do uh, volleyball. We have six pickleball courts. Pickleball is coming, what I call the uh, big... Big pickleball tournament coming up shortly, okay, yes. yes. Okay, so. We also have a uh, fantastic playground, yes. handicap accessible outside. It is located in Boundary Waters, and this was, a, this was part of the vision to build this park out. We already had the aquatic center. We had the ball fields down. Uh, soccer, football, baseball, softball at the other end of the park. So this was the last piece, if you will, to, to make it a complete active park. Now Terry, talk about the dollars and cents, kind of how we got to this point. So um, the project was started in t uh, 2019. Um, and we, uh, we finished it up in uh, late 2021. The design started. 
in 2019. Um, we went through several, as you guys will remember, uh, public meetings with the citizens uh, to get everybody's input. We had several different models um, that we, we, we laid out and ended up based on budget and scope uh, with the floor plan that we have here. Um, Pete Sutton did the architectural design on it and Ray Lynn did the construction. We came in a little bit under budget, uh, around $7.4 million for the building. Uh, it was, other than the typical construction issues we had, one thing if you, if, if the citizens, anybody can come in here, if you'll just notice the, the block work in here, it was quite uh, intricate in, in the layout. Every wall is different, every design is different, the colors are different on every wall. And it, it took a lot, of, a lot of work and a lot of planning and, and strategic planning for the contractors to do it and not, and not mess it up. So it's, it was a great project. Overall, it was a, a big success, uh, for, like Gary said, for the parks. The one thing I like is that it came in on the budget and it yeah. turned out exceptionally well. It did. Oh, so. Exceptionally well. And we can add to this building. So look That's at right. how your splashed penny, how far it went. Let's speak about another, let's talk about another project. Okay, the, uh, the uh, other indoor facility okay. that we built was the new senior center the new out senior in your district, yes, in District yes. 1. In district so it, it, we had a lot of money go into this park, yes. but we spread the, the money around yes. in different districts. It was about parks and recreation, yes. but on, this, on the subject of the senior citizen center, that facility turned out exceptionally well. Yes. I mean, we, we, and we'll get into the dollars and cents about it, but Talk about the, the build out and how did we get to the point of the senior, the Lithia Springs Senior Citizen Center yeah, on the Splash Penny. It was, it was a very good design. We had a good, a good design. Uh, it's a multi-purpose center. Yes. It uh, has a swimming pool in it. So, uh, you know, seniors can go and swim and exercise, which they say today that water aerobics is one of the best things that seniors can do for their, for their health. So they have the, uh, they actually have a uh, swimming pool, and then they have uh, indoor uh, pickleball courts. So yes. if they get tired of swimming, they can go in and do their pickleball and exercise that way, along with all the other activity rooms that they have there at the senior center. Our, sen our seniors are, they're just elated about this particular facilities. Right. And again, I'd like to shift to the numbers. See, because I want to really impress on those who are watching the numbers that got us here. That one penny that you went to the mall and you hung out eating and hanging out doing your things, this, that penny that got us here, that splash penny. It's amazing what a penny will do. And it, it, this was just one of the, the major projects in the 2016 splash program. So it was about 20,000 square feet indoor. Like Gary said, it had the indoor pool, um, the pickleball courts, a, a, a workout area. It's more of an activity senior center than it is uh, uh, some of the ones you may see, may see already built in, in the county. Um, but uh, the price come in uh, right, at, right at budget, under budget, or 5.4 million. Uh, Headley Construction out of Noonan built it. Uh, it was also finished last year in 2021. Um, another, uh, that, that project was complicated with the indoor pool. Um, it, it was a little more complicated. And sitting it on that lot, the, the, the piece of land we had, we had to strategically yeah. kind of make yeah. it fit and it worked. We own the land right next to the fire station. Right. So that was perfect. They have a big social room yes. where they can yeah. come and eat and dance and socialize. Very large. So that's another, another big part of that. And it turned out exceptionally well. And again, just how big this blast has done for the citizens of Douglas County. I'm gonna shift gears. Let's talk about uh, the tennis court, the new tennis court at Deer Lake. Can we talk about that? We had uh, problems with our tennis courts throughout the county. Yes. And uh, it was a long time coming to get that facility replaced. Uh, but we did, we had uh, the existing facility demolished mm -hmm. and had a place to come back with this new facility. We have five brand new courts, restroom facility, a picnic pavilion where People can come and play. Gary, I, I was surprised at what you did with this thing. This, this, this turned out, I, I was amazed about it all. A good contractor and, yes. and they, did a, they did an excellent job. Yes. Ran into a little rock, rock, rock problems, but uh, they got through yeah. it yes. and uh, we got the facility built and it's gorgeous. Deer Lick, is, it, that court is awesome, yeah. awesome. 
And again, it was all about the splost. Absolutely. That penny splost got us there. And it brought not only the, the, the tennis courts, it brought the lighting. It, I mean, everything, it was a package deal that kind of came in that whole deal. And again, you know, you're the numbers guy. So Terry, do you remember how those numbers came in and, and how, how did that, that so turn? We, we did go over budget a little bit, uh, 1.1 million. Steady the art tennis courts, though. It, uh, if I'm sure most of the citizens, or a lot of the citizens had been out there, it really needed it. First, we were going to try to rehab it, but it just was not practical. And we ended up doing the entire thing. And I think beautiful that was the lighting. Best. When yes. you play out there, it's almost yes. like you're playing at daytime. It's really, really good. That's, so it, was, it turned out to be a good project overall. You've got a lot to cover, and I want to kind of move some of these things uh, a little bit more quickly. Let, let's go out to Bill Arp and Fair Play. Okay, first of all, let's talk about three concession stands we've built, okay. brand new concession stands. Okay. We built one for uh, Bill Arp and Fair Play, and those are kind of mirrored. They're the, they're the same. They have uh, brand new restroom facilities, concession stands, and meeting rooms upstairs. So uh, those are very nice, very uh, beautiful amenities for the park. The third is a concession, restroom, meeting room that actually is at Boundary Waters. Mm -hmm. It actually services the soccer field on one side okay. and the football field on the other side. It. So it's a dual concession. Uh -huh. So we have, we provided concession for both the football and the soccer oh, wow. and then they share the restrooms and the, the meeting room. So that worked out really well. So again, the success. Here are the success stories about the Splast. I mean, it only makes sense that this is how we need to move Douglas County forward when it comes to parks and recreation. Right. Terry, anything to add about any numbers in that? Because I, I mean, I, I, see, because the reason I say this is because I want the general public to understand that the money was not wasteful spending. It was really strategically laid out and, and, and spent exceptionally well with this Board of Commissioners. I think we did an excellent job at managing that, that penny we got even during the whole um, pandemic. And that's when we got even more money. We, 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 we kind of got more money coming in during that time, so we were baffled by that. But if you want to speak to that, though. Let's just, at Boundary, I, I was looking at the total numbers that we've spent okay. uh, from, the, from the activity center here to the concession building to we did um, a new set of lights at the soccer field up there. And we, we spent close to 8.5 million total so far in Boundary. Uh, with the 2016 SPLOS. Mm -hmm. um, the concession buildings, uh, both of them around 1.5 million mm -hmm. uh, for Bill Art and Fair Play. Combined, um, total. Combined yes. for, for that, about 750, a little over that for each one. So, uh, yeah, the money, we've, we've managed the money, um, and we've, again, uh, the projects without, they've been some hiccups along the way with the rock and, and some things, but we're within budget. On, on, on all of Gary's on all of Gary's projects. If you had to say something in reference to the Splost penny, the success of just only Parks and Rec. Now you know there's other categories. What would that conversation be to the the viewing audience of DC TV 23? Well, the I would say that this was a magnificent way to upgrade our facilities. We knew from you know uh, when I first got here that facilities we were facility poor. We didn't have a lot of facilities, and the facilities we had were in definite need of upgrade. So I would say it's, it's been wonderful to be able to get that uh, extra boost, if you will, yes. for because you're, you can only do so much unless you have the facilities to provide the programs. We never could uh, conduct a big basketball league on our own facilities. We had to rely on the Board of Education, we have over 500 kids playing youth basketball, and we had to do most of it remotely in the schools. Now we can bring those kids into this facility and run our own programs on our own and have total control yes. of what we're doing. Absolutely. So, go ahead. No, no, no go, ahead. go ahead. The only other thing I would like to say, I don't want to leave our baseball and, and softball folks out. Okay. Uh, we've done uh, several major lighting projects. Uh, Terry will have to tell us about the amount of money, but we lit all, all the ball fields, or almost all the ball fields at Fair Play Park. 
down in the southern part of the county. We also lit some fields at uh, Bill Art Park uh, with the splash fund. So we've upgraded numerous sports and numerous uh, fields parks and, and fields in yes. different areas of the and county, county, all over, all mm -hmm. over the right. county. And, and that's the that's the important part about all of this is to understand how well this blast program has worked to bring on a Terry to manage it to to navigate that that journey to make sure that what we spend, how we spend it, and it's being efficiently spent to make sure we, we get it right, you know, as opposed to relying on the Board of Commissioners and or just the department heads. So, Terry, I mean, do you want to speak to the dollars or cents again on, on just the lighting? The, the one that Gary referenced down at Fair Play was right under $500,000. And we did, we, uh, if we didn't, there was maybe one or two fields we didn't light, but we ran new wiring to the ones that, uh, that didn't need it. Um, but and also at Bill Art, and we still got things going on right now. Currently, we're doing we we are redoing both of those parks, uh, the fence and the dugout. It's much needed, um, and fortunately, that's that's because the the revenues have been strong, and have continued to come in. They're above projections. Um, I think they had projected originally 147 million total revenues collected, and we're right now with 153. So it's made it possible to do the, the, the adi some of the additional projects we're gonna do. Okay, so I'm gonna add something. Let's, let's talk about, I know we had, let's get in your equipment line. Cause your equipment line is, a, is another line that this that shot in the arm that Parks and Rec needed to, to move the county and Parks and Rec forward. So talk about the equipment that we put out in each one of the parks. You have to, you have to maintain these, yes. these facilities yes. after they're built. So we've been able to buy commercial mower, commercial grade mowers with our uh, equipment money. We've bought trucks uh, for our maintenance staff to be able to move around and, and get around. So, uh, you know, those, those are important items. You have, to, you have to have the equipment to maintain what we want, it, how we want our parks to appear. I was speaking of the, another part of the equipment line where we got, we got some equipment that's on the field itself or... We've just, uh, we had, a, as Terry said, the money keeps coming in, so we had enough money on the reforecast list and we just put a requisition in for four brand new beautiful sets of playground equipment. Yes. And they'll go at Fair Play, Bill Arp, Deerlick, and um, Woodrow Wilson Park out in your district. So each, each, each uh, district gets a new playground. That's the part that I'm just, I know I keep stressing the mere fact of how and how well this SPLOST 2016 is done and how well it's helped those in Douglas County. Absolutely. Yeah, so it's been exceptionally well. So I don't want to miss out on those opportunities to let the general public know how well we've done. And, and the dollars, exceptionally, I mean, it was kind of good. The pandemic did us a favor it actually caused us to include myself and those citizens in Douglas County to spend in Douglas County to kind of recycle that dollar and that penny in Douglas County. Am I correct in that statement? It's like right. they stayed home. A lot of yes, people stayed, stayed home. home and spent their money it's right here money. in our county rather than traveling. A lot of people didn't, you know, they, they didn't want to take vacations and they didn't want to take their families out of Douglas uh, to expose them. Right. So they stayed right here and did things locally and so uh, our tax money uh, went up. You learn it about economics. You, 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 you try to recycle that dollar in your community. I want to say seven times if that number serves me correct. If you do that, then you, you benefit your community benefits as opposed to taking it to Fulton, Atlanta, and everywhere else. Sure. I, I get it though. Okay, so I'm gonna, we're gonna come to a close, but I just wanna, what about the chestnut log layout? Two things we haven't mentioned. Okay. Uh, one is Chestnut Log. Okay. We, we talked about the soccer money we spent down at, here at Boundary That's for the lights and for the half the concession stand servicing the uh, soccer fields. Correct. But at Chestnut Log, it's a, it's a facility, as you know, the land is owned by the Board of Education. So uh, thanks to you, uh, we approached the Board of Education to a partner in replacing some old fencing there and some netting, and the netting is netting that keeps the ball, the ball in play mm -hmm. so it can't go over fences. It's very expensive, netting is very expensive. Uh, so it can't go over fences and get into the parking lot and kids 
uh, don't have to chase balls through the parking lot and that sort of thing. So we, you approached them and we entered into a partnership with the uh, Board of Education and we're working on that now. We have submitted requisitions for new fencing and new netting uh, for Chestnut Log. The only other uh, item I'd like to mention is we're doing, uh, we've uh, incorporated a landscape architect to do some uh, conceptual plans for the upper fields at Winston Park and also Deerlick Park yes. so that we can have a conceptual plan and then move right into some kind of design plan and hopefully when and if we're able to do those projects, we'll be ready. Let's talk about, before we wrap this all up, and I know we get to the, to the close of this, there's those projects that what we call below the line and we reforecast and got some of those projects above the line, all because of those that was outspending did well. <laughs> they Absolutely. spent well. So, so kudos to those of you who went out and spent your penny and in in those dollars in, for the Splash Penny, though. But it gave us a chance to some of those items that was on the list to get above the, the line. And actually, we got a chance to kind of take care of a few other projects because the dollars came in healthy. Yeah. Selena, that, that, that's the case. And hopefully we got it projected right now to this, this current SPLOS ends next March 2023. And uh, we're, we're hoping to pick up maybe a couple more. Yes. Uh, but we'll know that when we get a little closer to the end of the program. Uh, yes, I mean, it's, it, it's, it's done well. It's done very well. And the penny goes a long way. I just want to say to you, though, Terry, you and your team, you and David Good, you guys did an excellent job at managing at managing that splost and, and that penny and the programs and, and moving the projects along. Because I know you spent a lot of time with me and Vice Chairman Robinson in the office trying to figure out kind of what's next and are we sure we're gonna make it or, yeah. or is there enough getting to the bottom line? Are we saving enough to be prepared for what's next? And you did an excellent job. You and David Good did an excellent job. Gary. You and the team at Parks and Rec, I want to say thank you for all that you guys have done. You guys did an excellent job at identifying the need, identifying where we need to spend that, that, that penny sploss dollar to make sure that it, it goes out through Parks and, Rec, Parks and Rec, not just in a particular park. You know, our focus has always has been, it's about parks and recreation, Absolutely. not just about any particular park. It's about parks and recreation. So any closing remarks that you'd like to add to that? You know, we, we uh, couldn't do it without the leadership that we have from the commissioners, and especially you being the uh, chairman of our Recreation Oversight Committee. Uh, you've probably done more for recreation in Douglas County uh, and the quality of life in Douglas County than anyone I know. So we appreciate that and we appreciate your leadership in the Parks and Recreation field. I thank both of you guys. I, I truly, truly appreciate it. Thank you for allowing me to help kind of move us along. And uh, serving as the Chairman of Parks and Recreation Committee, this has been a great journey. I can see a great future ahead for Parks and Recreation. So thank you again and thank you guys and thank you for joining us here on the DC TV 23 for the 2016 SPLOS completed updates. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. <laughs>